Good Vachra Boisai. Ah! Lili Nishmasimi Mirosi Ruspas Mordechai. We are here live in Ranana. In the beautiful home of Jonathan Eltis. So thank you, Jonathan. Thank you for having us. You know, the very first time that we went outside of the base Medrash into someone's home was approximately a year ago to Avi Mandelbaum's home in Mereshet. Avi Mandelbaum is a Mizrahi Yid. And that's what the shear is all about. We have a very, very diverse shear. If you look on Zoom, you'll see Hasidim with curly payas, and we have Misnagdim and Hasidim, Mizrahis, modern Orthodox, all sorts. We never ask, do you send your kids to the army? Do you say Misha Beirach for Chayalim? Do you hate the Medina? Do you love the Medina? We don't care. It doesn't matter. You know why? Because we're all here for one purpose, and that is to serve Hashem through learning Torah. We all do the same exact thing. This guy has this Ashkafa, he has that Ashkafa. But at the end of the day, we're learning Torah, we're doing the daf, and it's Geshmak to do the daf. And that's why we are here. So, I want to bring up, before we start, we have with us a very hush of a guest, Johnny Carr, who many of us who have been with the Shir for a while know the story with his son, Josh. And he's, he's here in Ranana, and he wants to say just a few words for 60 seconds, I think. Bezrat Hashem, here, come on here. Shalom Aleichem, Johnny. Are you able to see him, Gary? You gotta pay attention to this. You know what? You could sit down here. I'll get up to you. Here. Don't don't steal my jokes and everything here. This is joke one. <laughs> Go. Uh, thank you for letting me speak, Raveli. Simchat Torah um, just gone. Uh, my son uh, Joshua committed to learn a hundred pages of Daf. Uh, the next day he was admitted to hospital. And within a week, he was in intensive care fighting for his life. Uh, he was in an induced coma. When he woke up from his induced coma, one of the first things he said was, where am I with the daf? He was 14 pages behind the Sechah for Rosh Hashanah. And uh, amazingly, he, uh, he caught up. He caught up and uh, he uh, went on to then make his first uh, siyam for uh, uh, ending the Sechah to Rosh Hashanah, which was an amazing thing um, to do. Uh, three weeks later, sadly, Joshua um, passed away. Um, but in the uh, end of um, Maseches um, Malakatan, which we just finished, uh, we said at the, literally at the very end, Talmidei um, Hachamim Ein Lahem Menucha Afilu Lalam Haba. Torah scholars have no rest even in the world to come. And so I guess uh, after Joshua um, sadly passed away, 180 people learned Maseches Megillah in, in his honor, which was an amazing. Amazing wow. achievement, and people are still continuing to learn now from all over, literally all over the world. So I guess uh, the final words of the uh, Masechus of, 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 um, uh, that we learned, Torah scholars have no rest even in the world to come. Joshua's work has not finished. May we all continue that he leads and inspires from afar, and may we all continue to keep learning Daf uh, and Megillus in his name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Shkoya. May the Shama have an aliyah. Today happens to be a very, very special day for me and a bunch of the guys. I looked around in the room. There's a kitten that comes every single day to Shear. This redhead kid sits in the back. He barely speaks English. In fact, he's learning how to speak English right now. He goes, he got himself a tutor, but he comes every single day. His father wanted him to be in the Shear tonight. And he made some phone calls instead. No room in our car. So he decided to drive him here so he could be in the shear. And I'm thinking to myself, this is not a coincidence. Shmuel, you got to come here for a second. You got to come here. Bring your son with you. Come, come, Shmuel, Shmuel. It's very important. Come. But at least Shmuel, get over here. Where's Shmuel? Come here. 
let, let, me, let me explain to you something. There's a reason why you are here tonight. Come, come here, and I'm talking to you. Your son could also come. You stand on this side. The reason why you are here tonight, although you haven't been with the Shia for four years, but tonight you decided to come, first time in four years. You know why? Because it's exactly four years to the day wow. that we started this year. Wow. And you were there on day one. Is that not a coincidence? Yeah, it's not a coincidence. Wow. So, you had no idea, right? I had no idea. And no. if I'm already here, I didn't, I didn't think about it. If I'm already here, I want to tell you. That well, you can't, you can't just smooth. Ten, ten, okay, ten fine. seconds. I ten want, seconds. I want, to tell you, I want to tell you that doing the shir for everybody is a special thing because everybody's joining Taira. But it's not just Taira for the people that are learning. It's changing people's lives. And I look at my son. He said that I brought him over here. And people said, why? And I didn't, like, what's the why about? Of course. What, he's going to miss a shir for a day? <laughs> And if he gets up late, he, he runs to the zoo. It's amazing. And it's unbelievable. Shkaya. 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 So it's a big simcha for us. Four years. Four years. 1,460 daf ago. We started on Avedazara daf chav ches. A bunch of guys, including Shmuley, they said, hey, why don't you give us a daf? I was giving the, the synopsis then. I said, why don't you start the daf? So okay, let's start right away. Next day. Avedazara daf chav ches. In middle of a sugya, not a Mishnah. Not, I say this all the time. Because when you have inspiration, you just start wherever you are. If somebody is not doing the daf here, but wants to start the daf, start today. Don't wait for the next Masechta. The next Masechta is Yavama, it's not a great idea. Well, it's, it's <laughs> start today. So, you know, it's kind of late. But I want to just share with you a couple of emails, because this is what we do. We start to share with a few emails. Um... We have here from Woody Wyman. Woody, as a follow-up to my sponsorship, attaches a picture of my 11-year-old nephew, Dovi. Now, people wonder, because every time I turn the daf, it's sponsored by somebody in honor of Woody. So this is the Woody. When I recruited my brother-in-law to do the shir, I never imagined his 11-year-old son would ask me if he can listen to share with him. I got two recruits for the price of one. Hope this inspires others. Uncle Woody from Ahmed Bays. Here's the 11-year-old doing the daf, making a siyum. Got my brother-in-law to start the Megillah with MDY and he fell behind. He was ter- determined to finish. I told him to go to make a scene of the Shabbos. If he can push and finish. Bar Hashem, it's his first seum ever. Thank you so much for pushing Klai to do the daf and helping change so many lives. Natan Koshnud. Here is his brother-in-law who made his very first seum ever. Here's a guy by the name of Chaim Peretz Levine. Put up a sign in the middle of Flatbush in the Landale Shul. Screaming, do the daf, do the daf, giving out free Gemaras. By the way, we have some Gemaras if anybody wants to join. He stood there for an hour or two and he got 18 people to join in Landau Stiebel. Here is North Woodmere, the seam of Mike Cotton. We showed a bunch of pictures the other day and we're continuing to show pictures. We have still uh, Toronto, no, Toronto we showed, but LA and London and Manchester, all these guys. I mean, our first MDY was Hempstead Seum. Rocking the MDY jersey. Glenn Ackerman. His daughter, Glenn's daughter, is a pro ping pong player. From ping pong player. Pro. She's number 14 in America, I believe. Something like that. And here we have, thank you so much, Ravelli. Three other guys in Shivara Shrein who finished our first Masechta ever. Thanks for all that you do. Looking forward to making another Seum on Chagiga. Kobe. Litwin, it's four guys holding the MDY Gemara, and here we got guys from Mivaseret. My name is Yehuda Noble, my Chavrusa, Elimelech Waxberg, and I just made a scene on my cotton at the Kotel. This is the very first Masech that we did through Dafyomi. We started Dafyomi because of your amazing share at Mivaseret. We love the share. We have a Chavrusa before Shachrit, Chazring the Daf. And this is the last picture for today. All right. Now we have to do a couple of sponsors. Today's, the Kolel is being sponsored. We have a MDY Kolel that they do the DAF and they take tests from the beginning of Shas to where they are now, it's about 850 DAF, the next test. So, it's sponsored by Mr. Anonymous, Lilu Nishmas Chaya Bas Yosef. Masechtas Chagiga is dedicated by the Kessler and Davis families before Shlema from Miriam Esabas Dvorah Bikaro. Michael and Jamie Vemela, in memory of Dvor Fegabat Shmuel, and Menachem Mendel ben Elchanan, may the Nishamas have an Aliyah, and may Hashem bring Mashiach Bikaro. 
by Jonathan Eltis. Woo! In honor of Jonathan Austin. Every single day, for 30 days, he's sponsoring. For introducing me to MDY, Rabdovid Posner, Posner from Thornhill, who now learns Mishnayis Yomi because of MDY. And of course, to myself, for all that I do. Paras HaChaydish is a schus for Rafal Shlomo ben Lifsha and Rivka Bas Gila. They should have Bizoichat Zera Shel Kayama Bekarayv. Amen. And our own in house um, graphic designer, Nifter from COVID, the age of 40 something. Rib Shalom Baruch Yuda, the Colonel Baruch Ben Arab, Yosef Yichil Michal. If you look at this picture, interesting that Chaim Peres Levin, this is one of the posters that Yidi. Who's Nifter designed? And on the bottom it says, Our dear friend and official MDY graphic designer, Yidi Lewis of Shalom, Rav Shalom Baruch, he added that to, the, to that poster. And Simcha Shmuel Salman, my grandmother, Sima Bas Ribdov Ber Salman, who's Levias tomorrow morning, Sunday, in Lakewood. Shama should have an aliyah. And by Yosef and Zev, in memory of my dear brother, Aaron Tzvi and Shmuel Zev, Yibodal Lechaim Toivim, Arukim. Yeah, I remember him. He's from Farakaway. So, I have a question for everybody. Shmon Esri and Shabbos. Shalom Aleichem, Moishi. Shmon Esri and Shabbos. Myriv at night and Shachras in the morning. We talk about Shabbos. The entire Shmon Esri is about Shabbos. All the, why is it in Mincha? Has anybody ever thought, why is it during Mincha, we say, echad echad. What does that have to do with Shabbos? Hashem, you are one, we are one. Mm-hmm. I could go on. But why? Why do we say it? Today, Be'ezrat Hashem will have an answer. An Amad Be'ez. So, we're holding Daf Gimel Amid Aleph. Maishna, four lines down. Maishna le'inyan re'iya deptiu. We're talking about someone who's deaf, but could speak. Daf Gimel Amid Aleph, four lines down. Someone who could hear. I did? No. Three lines down. Why is it that somebody who could hear but can't speak, he's mute, or somebody that's mute but can hear, cannot hear, when it comes to going up to the base of three times a year, he's potter? Why is it that he, they're chayv and mitzvahs, right? Somebody that can hear but can talk, he's chayv and all mitzvahs. He has to bring a carbon. But when it comes to going up to Beis Amidah, she doesn't have to. Says the Gemara, Le'inyan ri'a gomar ri'a ri'a mahakel. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see, it's a very long pasuk, but I wanted to put out the entire pasuk. We have the passage that we know. So we have the word Yera in green. We also have the parsha of Hakel. Hakel is once every seven years after Shemitah, so in other words, next year in our cycle, Sukkot, the king comes, sits inside the Ezra Snashim. So if this is the base Hamikdash, this is Kaidah Shakadashim, this is the Heichal, this is the Menorah and everything, this is the Ulam, here's the Mizbeach. This part right over here is Dezis Nashim. It's not Dezis Nashim because that's where the women always are. It's called Dezis Nashim. Actually, the women are on top over here on the balconies during Yantav, but it's a large place. And the king would stand here in the middle on a platform and he would read Psukim. So it says in the Pasuk over there, in Pasuk Yudalav it says, Bevaikal Yisrael Leirais. It also says a lotion of ri'ia, just like we have over here, v'lo green and green. That's Xeris Shavu. The two words are similar. They mean to come be seen. And therefore, whatever halacha we have by hakel, we have also by ri'ia. So what's the halacha that we have by hakel? We have by hakel 
that people that can't hear or can't speak one or the other, they are potter from coming. It says like this. The men, women, and the children. And someone, someone who can't hear is potter. And how do you know that somebody that can't hear is part of the chsiv? Here at the end of the Pasuk, we have it right over here. So they have to hear. But what does it mean they have to learn? What does that mean? So you might understand. Did I skip? Again, what does that mean? You have to hear. In other words, someone who's deaf but could speak, he doesn't come up for hakel. The following two words come to tell us someone who could hear. But he can't speak. In other words, the Pasuk is saying, he has to learn. And if he can't speak, he can't learn. What's the logic in that? The Gemara right away goes into that. If a person can't speak, he can't learn? That can't be. There are two mute people. They were in the neighborhood of Rebbe. Rebbe, Rabbeinu HaKadosh, the, the author of the Mishnah. She should sit Mishnah. They were in his neighborhood. They were the grandchildren of Rabbi Yochanan ben Gudgada. Some say the nephews. Some say the nephews. The Cholemas that have an ayel Rebbe, the Beit Midrash, have an ayel Rebbe, Yasef, the Kamayu. Anytime Rebbe went into the Beit Midrash and gave a speech, these two mutes used to sit right in front of him. And they would shake their head up and down like they know what they're talking about. And they would pretend that they're talking, they're mute, they pretend. And Rebbe felt bad for them. He kept on seeing them over and over. And every year they went like this. He said, you know what? Hashem should help them that they should be able to speak. And they were healed. And we, they found out that these guys were no joke. They knew all of Mishnah, Shisha Sidri Mishnah, that's Hilchasa. They knew all of Shas, everywhere. They were never able to show anyone. Nobody ever heard them speak. Now that their mouth worked, they spewed out Shas, the entire Shas. So you see that a mute, obviously, we knew this beforehand, but we have a Raya here. You might argue and debate, could a mute understand? Maybe he can't really ask questions, so maybe he doesn't understand completely. No, here are mutes that understand pure, perfectly. So then why does the Torah say, Laman Yilmudu, that they should learn? Why do they need to learn? And it comes to exclude somebody that can't speak. Somebody that can't speak, he can't learn, says the Gemara. Rav- uh, what it means is that they can't teach. Yes, it says it says it in a lotion of they can't learn, but what we mean to say is they can't teach. And obviously, somebody who can't speak can't teach. So somebody that can't teach doesn't go to Hakel, doesn't go up to the base of and it must be that we read it Yilamdu. Obviously, it says Yilmedu, but we have to read it Yilamdu for this purpose. Why? So let me just say this outside. It's very, very simple. If the Torah tells us that somebody that can hear is Patu from Hakel, what does it mean he can't hear? That means he doesn't understand. That also means that a two-month-old baby doesn't have to go to Hakel. Why? Because a two-month-old baby doesn't understand, like somebody that can't hear. What about somebody that is completely crazy, can't, doesn't have to go to Hakel? What about somebody that's mute and can't understand, also doesn't have to go to Hakel? In other words, 
then there's no reason for the Torah to repeat itself again, that he can't hear, that he can't speak. If you're telling me, it's just a simple cheshman, if you're telling me that somebody can't speak, doesn't understand, so that's already included in somebody that's deaf. Somebody that's deaf means all the people don't understand, including a young child, including that. There's a whole list of people that don't understand. So then why does the Torah repeat, oh, and somebody that doesn't speak? Obviously, we don't read it, Laman Yilmedu. We're reading Laman Yilamedu. It's a big chiddush. Here we have a guy that understands 100%. He can repeat the entire shas to you. He doesn't have to go to Hakel. You know why? Because he can't teach. He doesn't have a mouth to teach. That gives him a heter not to go to Hakel. Inside. And you're of the opinion. Let's say we agree with your opinion that somebody that can't speak cannot understand. We already know from the first words that the person must hear in other words to understand. It must be that it's, you read it for this purpose. A new chiddush. Somebody can't teach. Part from coming to Hakil. Good Avi. Your brother's here also? Yeah. Hey, all the Kamianskis. It's just like at home. Omer Eb Tamcho. Cheresh Bozno Yachas. Potter Minari Iyo. If a person is Van Gogh, he only has one ear, he can't hear out of the other one of his ears. Potter from going up to Beis Amigdash three times a year. Shenemar Bozno Hem. Plural. He has to have two ears that he can hear from. And this Bosnian, by the way, is, is it here? Uh, yeah, hold on, it should be here. Maybe not in my... Yeah, it is in this Pasuk. But I call Yisrael, it's in this Pasuk, right over here, but it's chopped off. In this Pasuk, by Hakel, it says Bosnian. I should have printed it. And therefore, so what does that have to do with Ria? Now we go back to the Xerish Shava that we had before. Yera, Leirais, and whatever we have by Hakel, the halachas that we have by Hakel, we have by Oila, Leregel, by Yamtav. So therefore, somebody that only has one ear, since he's Potter from Hakel, he's also Potter from going to the Beis Amikdash. Says Gemara, but it's not extra, by Bosneim, and Bailey Bosneim, the Kuli Yisrael. It's just simply to tell us that all of Klai Yisrael needs to listen. I don't need that, the word Bosnaim, I learned it from the words Meneged Kol Yisrael, it should be for all Klai Yisrael. E Meneged Kol Yisrael. Avi, were you there on day one of this year? Yeah. Today's four years, you, you missed that part, but today's year number four. It's unbelievable, Mazel Tov. We have also Shmuley Kuperstein. Who's yeah, I just started in the middle of the Bazaar, I started... So you weren't? Not day one. Oh, you weren't day one. It's when you come, like a few weeks into it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Not day one. So you yeah, forget it. We'll talk about it later. Thank you. Oh, says the Gemara. If I have the word negative call Yisrael, I forgot the Lishami. It should just be facing the nation. Doesn't mean that they have to listen or pay attention. A lot of times you go to, so you know, here in Israel it's very common. Somebody speaks and everybody talks over him while he's speaking. So maybe that's okay. They just happen to be there. No. Because Rahman was name and has to go into their ears. They have to listen. With the Shami. Because Rahman was name with the Shami. Aho, Milaman, Yishmu, Nafka. But that, we learn from the word Yishmu that goes into their ears. Omer Abtach. If a person is lame in one, one of his feet. He doesn't have to go up to Beis HaMikdash. Shinemar Rigalim. So it says in the Pasuk, we're very familiar with this, but you can see it anyway. Shalosh Rigalim Tachag Libashana, obviously, is referring to Yom Tev. Tachag, Rigalim. But it's a play on words. It's feet also. And you need two feet. It says the Gemara of Aha, Rigalim, Ebele, Prat, Lebali, Kabin. So, Bali Kabin is somebody that has a prosthetic here. Looks something like this. They amputated a person's foot. This is just a picture I took from Shabbos. And they put a little bit of, uh, you know, soft tissue over here. And they, 
I don't know if that goes well. Tissue, like a like soft tissue. They put like some sort of um, sponge or something, and whatever. Fine. So this is cabin. Says the Gemara. Prat labali cabin. Says Gemara. Oh, mipamim nafka. I heard a corny joke. I'll say it to the island. Why not? It's Matzah Shabbos. How do you make Paravagala? You guys know what gala is? Sure, we love it. You love it. I don't know if here in Renata they eat gala. Okay. How do you make Paravagala? From a cow's prosthetic. Zagdimara. Aho, Mipam Nafka. That didn't go over very well in Renata. Aho, Mipam Nafka. So, Palme means times, but it also means, the Gemara understands, it also means feet. So, we learn the cabin from Palme, the prosthetic from Palme, the Sanya. Palme, ain't Palme el raglayim, the word Palme means feet. V'cheinu oimer, termeseno regel, will trample with your foot, ragli ani, Palme dalim, the feet of the ani, the soles of the, the poor. The footsteps, the footsteps, the noble. Question Who is the first human being to be Euler Regal, to go to the base of Megdosh? Who said that? The rabbi's father? Rabbi Schreiber himself. That's right. Avram Avino, when? By the Akeda. Yeah. But I think Noyach was also there. So I don't know. Noyach was there. Adam was there. Okay, right. So, but you're saying he was Euler Regal. Can have all. There's a lot of stuff going on there. But they say Avram Avinu was the first one to be Euler Regal. Okay. I think by the Akeda. Yeah. What do you mean? He was the first. They weren't really Jewish. Okay. Regal. <laughs> Bas Nadiv, Bitei Shel Avram, the daughter of the noble, meaning Bitei Shel Avram Avinu Shenikra Nadiv. He's he's called the Nadiv Shenemar Nedive Amim Neesafu Am Eloike Avram. The the Gerim, the Dive Amim, those who gave with their heart. People that didn't have to become Jewish. They became Jewish. It's an adava that they gave. Nedivei Amim, Nesfu Am Elikei Avram, Elikei Avram, Veliloi Elikei Yitzchok, Yaakov. What? It's only Avram's God. It's not Yitzchok and Yaakov. It's Ella Elikei Avram. Shayet Chilol Gerim. He's the first Ger. Omer Rav Tana. Dorsh Rav Nasan Bar Min Yomim Mishum Rav Tana Chum Maidach Siv Vahabai Rei Kain Boy Mayim. Famous pasuk. The the brothers threw Yosef into the pit. It was empty and it didn't have water. So it's, you know, once you say it's empty, obviously it didn't have water. Of course it doesn't have water. Yes, it didn't have water, but it had snakes and scorpions. So I mean, the, 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 the famous pshat here, or it's my famous pshat, I think it's written in Svarim, but if it's not, I'll take credit for it. I'm sure it's written in all the Svarim. Is that, but I didn't see it anywhere is that the, a human being is a vessel and it's going to contain something. It's either going to contain water, and if it doesn't have water, it's going to contain nechashem akrabim. Water ain mayim elo taira. Either you have in your vessel taira or you have Netflix. You have to choose which one you want. You could put both, a little taira, a little Netflix, but it's going to contain something. So it says, it didn't have water, but it had nechashem akravim. You have to be careful to make sure that you fill your vessel that Hashem gave you with the right stuff. They call him chisma because he once got up there and he davened for the Ahmed and it was terrible. You hear this, Simon? He messed up. And then the second time around, he did a pretty good job. So they said chisma. It's like you got chizuk. Oh, Baruch Hashem, you chisma. So they call him chisma. Fine. 
There's a chiyuv to go to see a Rebbe. If you, there's no, we'll see if there's no Ali Laregel, so you go to your Rebbe. They want to be Ali Laregel. They went to the Rebbe. If you have to go out again, you have to go that way. Oh, okay. Wow. Hold on, let me pretend I'm drinking. So, no, tell me something good that you learned in the base Medrash. We're your students. We need to hear from you. We're not going to tell you. I insist. There's, there's no such thing as a base Medrash without a Chidosh. Every day we have to hear new stuff. Whose turn was it to say the Torah then based on the Gemara? I think in Brachas, where, where one week was Rebeliya, when they, when they switched the famous thing, Irani Kivim Shim Shana, so they decided, you know, we'll do, we'll do a Torah note. One week, Rebelazar, and one week, three weeks, and one week. You're right. Very good. Shabbosh for Rebelazar ben Azari, so one week for Rebelazar ben Azari. He got one week or three weeks? One week. And who got the other three? Yom Leo. Yom Leo. What do they say in base measures? Amr lai the parshas hakel. Interesting, because we we're just talking about hakel, and the drasha was in parshas hakel. Uma darish ba hakel saam ha'anoshim va'anoshim v'atav. Gather all of Klai Yisrael, the men, the women, the children. Says the Gemara. Let's understand this. Im ha'anoshim ba'im lilmoid. I understand why men come to learn. They come to learn. They come to understand. Noshim ba'is l'shmoya. They come to hear. Taf lama ba'im. Why do the children come? To give schar for those. Oh, oh. You mean a son gave him schar? That's why Shmuley came, to get the schar. Wow, you hear Shmuley? Get the schar. Look at the bottom, Taisvis. You ever wonder why these little kids come and they make a lot of noise and run around? Here, this is surely, it says, yeah, okay. I'm not going to go there. His daughter comes every Shabbos and she jumps on me. She whacks my head. She slams her fingers in the seat. Every week she hurry and gets caught. You know the, the, those seats and those shoals go up. Only in Israel. Hazard. I, I saved her life. I'm not kidding. I kid you not. Her, her fingers are stuck there and he's looking at her and she's like, she couldn't even talk. She couldn't even scream. I had to save her. Fine. Don't bring her to shul. Do me a favor. Not her. It's talking about other people. So, Here's very, very interesting, if you think about it. The, I forgot where I saw this. So one of the Svarim, the Chavis Yar or something, he says like this. Think about it. If all the men and all the women of Klai Yisrael go to the Beis HaMikdash, who's watching the children? There's no babysitters. All the adults are in the Beis HaMikdash. So there's no choice. You have to bring your children. So then the Gemara asks, if you have to bring your children, then why does the Torah tell me you have to bring your children? Of course you have to bring the children. Oh. Hashem could have just said, men and women come. And obviously everybody's going to bring the children. But Hashem wanted to do you a favor. He said, I'm going to put it in the Torah and say, bring your children. And now you get extra mix for bringing your children. If you're, if you're at work and your boss says, every time you sit down in the chair, I'll give you a hundred bucks. But I have to sit down. Of course, I have to sit down to get to the computer. I have to sit down. Every time, cha-ching, hundred bucks. Every time you put on your shoes, you have to put on shoes. But every time you put on your shoes, this is a halacha. It says, first you put on your right shoe, then you put on your left shoe. Then you tie the left. Then you, now you get it. Now, if you do it, la halacha, I'm going to give you schar. But you have to put on the shoe anyway. Here, Bilam I'm tired of mitzvahs. I gave you extra mitzvahs in the Shulchan Arach. Don't say it's a lot. Because he added those mitzvahs, now I get schar. I had to do it anyway. I might as well get schar for it. Zog Gemara. I can't read my own handwriting here, but it's Baruch Hashem, I remember about Peh. I think that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, okay, next. Omer lehem, Margolis toiva hoise v'yedchem ubikashtem la'abdam imeni. So he tells them, could you imagine if you would have insisted not to say your Dvar Torah? I would have missed out on this beautiful pshat. What's so, why was he so excited about this pshat? So I saw also, there's a Yerushalmi that says that it was his mother, the famous Gemara in Yerushalmi, that 
There was a mother that used to bring a child to shul all the time, even when he's a baby in the stroller. That's his mother. And, and because they said, hey, it's, why did the Torah say taf? To give schar to the mother. Oh, he felt all good. Now my mother gets all the schar all the times that she brought me to the shul and I had no idea what was going on. But you just see, there's an idea. Whatever goes into these children's brain, even if you think that they don't understand, if they listen to Tyra, it, get, it penetrates, and then they could grow up to be like Rebbe Lazar, Lazar ben Azar. Says the Gemara, V'oid darash, es Hashem hemarta ayoyim, you praise Hashem today. V'Hashem hemircha ayoyim, and Hashem praise you back. What does that mean? You praise Hashem and Hashem praise you back. What happened? You made me unique. One unique praise. And I'm going to make you, Klai Yisrael, unique. What is this? This has to be the most famous pasuk in all of Tanakh. You made me one. Shema, Shema Yisrael. You guys don't know the song, it's fine. Ranana, huh? <laughs> 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 here we come. Hashem <laughs> Echod. Better than Ramah Pacham, she got to tell you. Yeah. Shema Yisrael, it's not hard. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Alekin, Hashem Echad, says Gary. Bani Yisrael, Hashem Echad, Yisrael, Hashem Echad, You made me one singular, I'm going to make you one. Shenemar. Dav Gimel Amad Beis. Umi ke'amcha Yisrael goi echad ba'aretz. Remember that Pasuk from Mincha and Shabbos? So, if you look in Taisvah's here, so Hashem says, I'm going to make you a singular nation. You're going to stick out. You're my favorite nation. Says Taisvez, I think we should read it inside. It's a beautiful Taisvez to know. There are three that testify one to the other. There's three testimonies going on. You have Klai Yisrael and Hashem that testify about the Shabbos, that it's a day of, of rest. Yisrael v'Shabbos ala Kodesh Baruch Then you have Yisrael and Shabbos testifying Kodesh Baruch Hu shuhu echad. Kodesh Baruch Hu v'Shabbos a Yisrael shem yichidim b'umayis. And Kodesh Baruch Hu and Shabbos testifying Klai Yisrael. This thing umi kam Yisrael gavua now makes a lot of sense. V'azeh samchin and loy marat echad b'mincha b'Shabbos. Now, finally, after all these years, if you wouldn't have come to today's shir or you're not doing that for Yomi, you daven at the echad the rest of your life, and you'd have no idea. Why we say Ata Echad? By Mincha and Shabbos. And here it explains to you. Because it's all about Shabbos. Ata Echad, Vishim Echad. Klai Yisrael and Akash Baruch are testifying about Shabbos that it's our day of rest. You hear Shemuel, it's Kedai that you came today. And Hashem and Shabbos testify about Klai Yisrael, that they're one, they're unique. Umi Kam Chai Yisrael. Teferez, But now we know why. Great. I don't know if you guys know, Ivan Galinsky just said a vitz here. It, I liked it because I was a caterer. When I was a caterer, so when the guy had an open bar, we used to buy two six-packs of beer. That's it. For the entire wedding. Yeah, 500 people. That's it. That's all the Jews drink. Back in the day. Today it's a little different with these Shiva guys. They don't drink. We used to make a killing on them. By the non-Jewish weddings, oh, it's a disaster. Each guy needs a six-pack. So... He said, Umi Kamcha Yisrael, that if all the Jews in the world drink, Gayachad Baritz can out drink them. <laughs> Fine. Zog to Gemara. Va'af hu Pasach Vidarash. Rabbi Lezman Azariah continued to speak. He, he's the one that now spoke. Divrei Chachamim Kirdavainais. Their Bainais is a goad. It looks something like this. It's one of these guys. It's. It's to goad your, your, your cow, your whatever it is. You give him a little zets. The Medrash says, Darbinus is like, Kid Darbinus, like a 
kadur banois, like a, a ball that the girls play with. They toss it. So they toss a question to one, and the guy answers back, something like that. Ukimasmer is netuim sufais, and like nails that are planted. Oh, turning to that Gimel and Bey sponsored by Moshe Horn, now we finally understand also. In honor of Woody, we had him, you weren't here. He had a whole thing. Woody, Chewy, and the Kale twins. And also sponsored in honor of Rabbi Eli, wishing him Hatzlach and all the, his endeavors, both in Gashmis and Ruchnis. Need it. Now, if you just read the Pasuk, like a nail that's planted, it's not really planting and nails don't go together. You don't plant nails. Okay, the Gemara is going to discuss it for a second. They came from one shepherd. Why is the Torah similar to this? Why is it compared to a Darvan? Just like with this, you could take the ox and make sure that he's in a straight and narrow. So two, Torah keeps you straight and narrow. It does. Everybody, that everybody, I get emails every single day, the same thing. The daf changed my life. I'm a changed person. The Torah in it, the hashkafa, the, the stories, the, that changes you. And it keeps you on the straight and narrow. Keeps you, you're a good person. You, your business is better. Everything's better. The famous joke, but I'll change it around because we're in Renana. There was a new couple, young couple, just got married. So the wife wants to show the husband her new horse that she has in the new wagon. Puts him in the horse and wagon, and she starts going. And two minutes into the ride, the horse veers to the right. So she whacks the horse, she goes, that's once. Keep on going. Everybody knows the joke, but I got you, because I started from the wife. (laughs) (laughs) But he's saying, I don't know the jokes. I'll tell for him. Two minutes later, the horse starts eating grass on the left. She goes, that's twice. The horse starts, keeps on going. Third time, she pulls out her gun, shoots the horse in the head. The husband says, what, what are you doing? What? That's once. <laughs> the joke is the, the husband, but you know, you got to politically correct. The wife did it. Okay. Never said it, never said it. This is brand new. It's new material. As kind of Bishinui. Mechavir is a trial, it's a parallel to Lamel, La Isichayim La Oilam. Okay. This goes here. After you're talking, Mechavir is Lamdem, Edarke Misa, Ledarke Chayim, Taira keeps you away from death, keeps you on the straight path of Chayim. Ima Dorvan Zem Metaltel, Af Divri Taira Metaltelin. Oh. So a person could say to himself, but, you know, if I'm going to spend time learning, my business is going to suffer. It sounds legit. It's like nails. No, it's here to stay. This, but a nail goes in, it, 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 it takes up space. So maybe Torah also, it's going to take up space. I'm going to, I'm going to miss out. So, it says, actually has the ability to increase your parnasa. It's talking about parnasa according one to, 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 to the main pshat. Torah also has the ability to increase. I'll tell you with my own personal experience this month. This month. I didn't realize how strong it is. I'm, the more I think about it, it's, it's literally a nace. Why? I said this a few days ago and I'm going to say it again. Because it's really, it's really true. You know, I do real estate in Chicago. But ever since I started with this year, four years ago to the day, the tire has been a very, you know, the, the real estate has been weak. I kind of uh, neglected it. I have a partner, and he does his thing. So just last week, I, we did a big deal. We sold a lot of our apartments in Cleveland. We had 2,000 apartments. Now, when do we buy them? 
like a year and a half ago, in the middle of Shear, while I'm doing Shear. And it occurred to me, and we did okay, you know, we did, it was a very nice deal for us. Good deal, we refinanced, sold, the whole thing. It was a nice exit. Thought to myself, if I was in Chicago, I would have never owned those 2,000 apartments. Why? Because my partner doesn't know much about real estate. He's, he's more the number guy. I was more the, the hands-on. I did a lot of construction physically. I did a lot of flips, a lot of this. So that was my thing. So when he saw the, I didn't even see it. I didn't even walk these apartments. I saw it once, but I didn't walk the apartment. When he went to walk to the apartments, he looked, oh yeah, it looks good. If I was there, I would pop open the first apartment, the breaker back. I'll look inside and I'll say, oh my gosh, we have to change all the wiring of all the buildings. Why? Because it's that old stuff that burns the buildings down and you can't get insurance for it. But I wasn't there. And I only found out after we bought the property, oh, and it cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars more to replace all the wiring. We couldn't even get insurance. We only found out when the insurance got, but that was the first thing I used to do. Take up my screwdriver, open up the thing, and look inside, you can't buy this building unless you give us a, if I was there, I would have killed the deal. And because, and I was upset at him, I said, what are you, you didn't check the electric, the, number one, the first thing you check is, you didn't check, I didn't know. So what didn't you check? You checked the carpet. Oh, <laughs> But I would have nixed the deal. So you see, me learning over here, I made more money than being over there and ruining everything else. I you stay. But I want to tell you something else. I want to go a little bit weiter. The Gemara is talking about Gashmias, Parnassa. Tyra, if you learn the daf, you're guaranteed it's not going to hurt your Parnassa. Everybody has time. The guy in Yerushalayim, we just bought from the store. I work 17 hours a day. So this guy's an idiot. You know why? Because if he would have worked 8 hours a day, he would have made exactly the same amount of money. You cannot make one dime more than what you would have made if you would have worked 8 hours a day. It's impossible. Because whatever you're supposed to make on Rosh Hashanah, that's how much you're going to make. You can't increase it. You work 27 hours a day, 46 hours a day. It doesn't help. So you just work for nothing. Okay, I didn't want to tell him that he's an idiot, whatever. I'm talking to everybody here because you know what I'm talking about. I also used to work 17 hours a day in stupidity. But I want to tell you something else. When you, there's a guy here in this room. His name is Simon Cohen. Simon Cohen. So I want to talk to you for a second. You brought many people to the DAF. How many people did you bring to the DAF in the last month? A bunch of people are raising their hands. How many? What do you think? 20? 28 people. The Torah that these people learn, every single one of them, you get part of the Sechar. I don't know if you know that. It's Pasha. But it's para verava. Torah is para verava, meaning it multiplies. The people that you brought, the 28, you know what happens? The relationships with their families, with their wives, with the children, they, they're going to bring more people by Zer Hashem. You're not going to know about it. You get up there, they say, you know, you brought 700 people to learn Torah. What? I only brought 28. No! The 28 multiplies, and it happens with everything else, with Parnassa and with Torah Bezer Hashem. It is a Ponzi scheme. It's a Torah Ponzi scheme. So, so Tomer, is, uh, he's on top of that. It's a Ponzi scheme. But it's one of these Ponzi schemes that everybody, it doesn't take away from the guy learning. The guy learning makes a thousand points. The guy that brings him gets a thousand points. And the guy that brought him gets a thousand. Everybody. It, Everybody gets over there. That's how it works, the Ponzi scheme. You could all join. Rabbi Eltis over here got, uh, how do you pronounce your name, Eltis? Uh, what? Got it. You also get schar, bringing people here and the joining Torah. And join. Everybody gets schar. Fine. Bali Asufais. What's Bali Asufais? The people gather. El Tamid Chachamim, Sheyoshvim, Asufais. Asufos, they, they, they sit in groups, and they talk in Torah. There's groups, they're fighting, like in Beis Merish. This guy says, it's Tame, this guy says, it's Tar, what's going on here? They say, it's Aser, it's Mutter, this kind is of puzzle, this Psulim, this Kosher people. How can I learn? The Torah that they're arguing about, they're only arguing for the truth, for the sake of the truth. What did our shepherd, Moshe Rabbeinu, tell us? What did Hashem tell us? One God gave it. 
Mipi, Adon Kalamais, and Baruchu, and one person in charge of Klai Yisrael said it over in the name of our master, Kalamais, and Baruchu. Dechsev, Vaidaber Likim is Kalad Var Meila. Avato, Asei Oznacha, Kafar Keses. Afar Keses is this, a mill hopper. You see, it's kind of, if you go this way, it's even better. It, it's very large. It gets narrow at the bottom. So make your ear large that it could hear everything, hear all this tyro. I think I'm done with the corny jokes for tonight. I have one, but we'll save it for later. Okay, fine, I'll say it. A guy went to the barber and he told the barber, it's once a Shabbos, so I'm just in a good mood. The guy went to the barber, he tells the barber, listen, I got, I got a very large ear, one large ear. Um, I'm going to take off my hat if you promise me you're not going to laugh. So, he says, oh, fine, I won't laugh. So he takes off his hat, and he cracks up laughing. So he says, okay, that's it. Because you laughed, I'm not going to show you my really big ear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zuck the Gemara. He didn't get it, huh? He had two, one was big, one was even, yeah. Uknei lecha leiv meven l'shmoya as direi mitamem vez direi mitarem. You should, you should have a heart that understands those who say it's tamay, those who say it's tar. As direi oisrim, as direi matirim. As direi paisim, as direi machshirim. Beloshen azeh omar lam. Ein dor yosam sherebi Elazar ben Azariah shor b'soychoy. Since the generation as Elazar ben Azariah, this it's not a generation of, of orphans. Now the Gemara says something amazing. The leimer lei behedya. When Rebbe Elazar ben Azariah asked them, "What are you learning in Shiva?" They started. Eh, we don't want to say. Why don't you tell us first? No, he pressured them. Fine, he said it. Why can't they just say? He asked them for dvar Torah. Say it. <coughs> Says the Gemara, Mishum Maisha It was very, very dangerous to say Dvartaira to Rebbe Lazar. You know what could happen if you say Dvartaira to Rebbe Lazar? Here, the Sanya Maisha Rebbe Yosi Ben Dermaskis Shalach Lachbel Pnei Rebbe Liazer Beloi. Amar Loi Mai Chiddush Hayah Beis Hamedrash Hayah. Tell me a Chiddush. Amar Loi Nimnu Vegamru. They said in the Beis Hamedrash, Amar Omaya of Maaser Maaser Ani B'Shvius. Sounds very scary, but it's not really. This is the, the famous chart of Trumas Maestro. So it goes like this. Very, very simple stuff. When you have a crop, you have to give 2% to the Kayan. That's called Trumagdaila. Then, whatever is left over from the 98%, you take that and you give 10% to the Levi. What is that called? Maestro The Levi, so these two, the Yisrael has to give. When the Levi gets his 10% of the 98, 9.8, he takes... 10% of that, and he gives it to the coin as well, and that's called Trumas Meiser. Then we have something called Meiser, either Shani or Ani, depending on the year. On year 1, 2, 4, 5, we give Meiser Shani, another 10%. So we give 2%, then 10%, and then another 10% every single year. Total of, I don't know how many, because it's 10% of whatever's left. It's not 22, it's whatever's left. Fine. The point is that in year 1, 2, 4, 5, we give 10% to yourself. It's really to yourself. Maizu Shani goes to yourself. You bring it to your shalim. You eat it. If you can't bring it, it's too much. You transfer it into money. You bring the money to your shalim. You can buy steaks there. You buy food, etc. But years 3 and 6, you give 10%, not to yourself, to the poor. 3 and 6 of the years of Shemitah. Now we're in the 7th year of Shemitah. Years 1, 2, 4, 5, Maizu Shani. And my Surani is three and six. Now, his chiddush is that Amon and these countries right outside of Eretz Yisrael, they decided that we have to give this my Surani, this business over here, this bottom, bottom guy, my Surani, which is year three and six, also on year seven. That was the chiddush. It's outside of Eretz Yisrael. And it's Shemitah. You're not allowed to plow your field. No, they would plow their fields over there and give the produce to the Ani. Now, Rebbe Lezim and Azariah was very upset. Extremely upset. 
It's hard to understand this Gemara. Amalah Yaisi. Pshait Yodecha. Go like this. You're about to receive a gift. Vikabele Necha. You're going to see in a second your eyes are going to pop out of your face and fall into your hands. Pasha Yoda Vikibalenov. Poof! He looked down, his eyes are in his hands. Oh, so now we understand why they didn't want to say any Divrei Torah. If you say Divrei Torah, you can have your eyes in your hand. Or even worse, dangerous. Why was he upset? Because it wasn't their Chiddush. This is an old Chiddush. It wasn't from this base measure. She pretended as if it was their Chiddush. Now, just to calm people down here, they're like thinking, what's going on here? He said Divrei Torah and his eyes popped out. So I saw a nice pshah from Rabbi Yanki Kamenetsky. By the way, there's a, there's a nice ending to the story. It's coming up. He got his eyes back. Don't worry. <laughs> Rabbi Yanki Kamenetsky says that to see to go to see your Rebbe is like going up to the base of Mikdash. It's instead of Aliyah le Regal, you do Ayla Regal to your Rebbe. When you go to the base of Mikdash, there's two things. Lirais and Lirais. It's to see Hashem and for Hashem so to speak, to see you and see what's going on. How, you're, how are you doing, my friend, my son? When the Rebbe asked the Talmud, Rebbe Lezim and Azariah said to Rebbe Yaisi, say something. So the Talmud was there to be seen and to be, for the Rebbe to see him. So instead of the Talmud saying, let me hear you, I have to hear from you first. I came to see you. He said, oh, he started saying his Torah. Oh, you don't want to hear from your Rebbe? You just want your Rebbe to see you? So you don't need eyes. You don't want to see him. You don't need eyes. Give me your eyes. That's what Rebbe of Kamenetsky says, Pshat. Now, Bacha Rebbe Liezer, Rebbe Liezer started crying, Omar, Soyed Hashem, Lireyav, those who fear Hashem, Uvrisoy Lohidiyam. Omar Loi, Leichem Marlem, Alto Choyshu Leminyanachem. You guys are voting, don't worry about it. This is an old, old decree that Amun Umayyav, these countries next to Israel, they don't keep Shemitah, and they should give the produce to the poor so that the poor have what to eat on the seventh year of Shemitah. This is all the way from Moshe Rabbeinu, Amun Umayyav, Ma'asr, Ma'asr, Ani, B'Shviyas. Matam. Why don't they have Shemitah and Amun Amayev? Harbi Krachim keeps you other Mitzrayim, Vilay keeps you other Bavel. There are many places where those Jews that came out of Mitzrayim conquered when they came into Eretz Yisrael, and later on they were thrown out of Eretz Yisrael and they went to Galos. When they came back, so the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael doesn't remain forever. And when they came back, they reinstituted the Kedusha. They reinstated the Gdusha. <coughs> the first initial Gdusha that Klai Yisrael put into Israel didn't last forever. Yes, Amen was part of Eretz Yisrael and had its Gdusha. But since they left Eretz Yisrael, the Gdusha went away. And when they came back after Golos, they didn't reinstate it. Why? So that the poor have what to eat. Tana, says the Gemara. After Ibn Yazir come down, Omar. Baruch Hashem, his eyesight came back. I say that I don't think it's a big deal to poke somebody's eyes out. I think we all do that. We're all good at poking people's eyes out. The Chachma is to put the eyes back in. Tana Rabbanon. This is a great question. Ezu Shaita. Who's a Shaita? Love it. Now, when I first thought, or read the sugi, I thought that perhaps, if a guy is completely deranged, mamish nuts, crazy, he's a Shaita. Then I saw that saying, no. If he doesn't follow these rules of the Gemara, he's not a real shaita. You could call him psychol- you could go to a psychiatrist and he could label him shaita. It doesn't mean he's a real shaita. There was a guy, a famous case. There was a guy that got married and 
immediately after the marriage, he disappeared. They found him hiding in a barn. It's a famous case. Hiding in a barn with all the money from the Nadunya. So they convinced him to come back. And he was, he's normal on Chavez. And then he said, I got to run. Why are you hiding? Because people are after me to kill me. So they said, okay, you got to get divorced. This is not good. They convinced him to give his wife again, got divorced. Then the father came and he's very upset. So oh, he took all my kids' money and, and he made a whole stink. This is in Europe back in the day. And he said, my son couldn't, he wasn't capable of giving a get. He's a shaita. And there's a whole need in the, in, with the Achrayim. What is a shaita? Does he rip his clothes like the Gemara says? No. <laughs> he's just thinking that somebody's out to kill him and he hides in barns. That doesn't make him a shaita. It's not part of the Gemara. It was a whole back and forth. Some said different things. And if a guy goes out and walks by himself in the dark, he sleeps at night in the, in the cemetery. And he rips his own clothing. You have to do all three. One of these three, let's say he rips his clothing, but it has to be three times. He has to rip his clothing three times, or he has to sleep in the cemetery three times. If he's, you see that he's deranged and he's doing it, then even one of these. And if he didn't do it in a deranged manner, even if he does all three, you have normal people that do all three things like this. They sleep in the cemetery. Yeah, and in the Gemara and Brachas, the guy slept in the cemetery, heard all the things. He wasn't, he wasn't deranged. And if he, and he ripped his clothing once, so that makes him sugar. Says the Gemara Lailam, the Kavadu Der Shtos. You can see that he's crazy. Valam of Isaac Faris, Amor. But each thing has a reason. Amor, Kadeshit Ishra Allah, Ruach Tomo, the Kavad. He wanted to get some sort of shade and whatever Ruchas into him by sleeping in the cemetery. And by this, he'll be able to say things and know things. Vayoyti Yichid of Alayla, Amor. Gandrifa Zachde. He had like anxiety of some sort, says Rashi. Vam Korea is Ksusoy. Or Rashi says, well, he, needed, he needed some fresh air. Uh, listen, he's very, he's, he's caught up in his thoughts. There's no raya. Even the Kulu, Havlu, the famous Reb Chaim Briska says on this Gemara, when a person has one excuse, another excuse, another answer, another answer, another answer, it's better to say one answer. Meshuga. If you have one answer, then answers three questions. Say that. Instead of saying, well, maybe he wants to talk to Shadim. Maybe he's at anxiety. I mean, okay, better to say one answer than instead of three answers. We know the famous sugya that you become a muad if your axe gores three times. But even if it's three different types of animals. Fine, we'll stop here. Everybody have a good vach. Tomorrow morning, live in Bet Shemesh at 7.15. Thank you very much.